Let's look at how solutions form and particles behave as they dissolve. To do this, we'll use a computer simulation. A model such as this one allows scientists to see and do things they wouldn't otherwise be able to. In this model, we have a container of water. We also have a shaker of salt and another shaker of sugar. We can see the concentrations of salt and sugar in our solutions. We also have a tool called a conductivity probe. A conductivity probe, like this one, is made of a light bulb with a battery. The circuit in this light is not completed. However, if we dip these two electrodes into a material that can carry electricity, electricity flows and the light bulb goes on. Now let's take a closer look at the two types of compounds. The first, salt, or sodium chloride, is an ionic compound. If we could see the particles in salt, we'd notice a series of repeating ions. These are organized in such a way that the green chloride ions sit right next to the violet sodium ions in a one-to-one -one ratio. You know a substance is ionic when it contains a metal, like sodium, with a nonmetal, like chlorine. Recall that all the metals appear on the left side of your periodic table and are colored gray on this table, while the nonmetals are on the right side, colored pink. The second type of compound is a covalent or molecular compound, and this is made of two or more nonmetals. Nonmetals are generally found on the right side of the periodic table, though hydrogen also is classified as a nonmetal. A closer view of the sugar molecule reveals a number of dark gray carbon atoms with red oxygen atoms attached and white hydrogen atoms surrounding these. Now you know that the atoms aren't really colored, but this provides a convenient way to model these molecules. Let's pause the video now and answer a few questions on the study guide. If you don't remember the answers to these, you can go back and watch the video again. So now we'll check the conductivity of some different substances, beginning with pure water. Do you expect this to be an electrolyte? Should the light go on? No, pure water is not a conductor. So let's try adding some solute. Notice that there are limits to how much solute can be added. Eventually, the solution becomes saturated or full of solute. When I test the conductivity of my salt sugar solution, I discover that it's an electrolyte and it's a good one. So pure water is a non-electrolyte, but my salt and sugar solution is a good electrolyte. So let's start with a fresh solution and try just adding sugar. If we make a sugar solution, it does not carry a current. And if we make a salt solution, it does. So aqueous sodium chloride is an electrolyte, but aqueous sugar is not. Let's pause the video again and answer another question. Review the video if you don't remember the results of this experiment. So why does salt water carry electricity, but sugar water does not? What if we could see the tiny particles found in these solutions? What could they tell us about conductivity? This simulation can show us what we would see if we were as tiny as an atom. Let's watch a particle of salt or sodium chloride as it dissolves.
Notice that when this ionic compound hits the water, it goes from a crystal structure and immediately breaks down into freely moving charged particles called ions. This happens because water is able to overcome the bonds that join those ions together. Those moving charged ions allow a current to pass through the solution. Do sugar particles, or sucrose, behave the same when they dissolve? Watch what happens when C12H22O11 molecules dissolve. Whoa! The covalent bonds hold this molecule together, so the sucrose molecule stays intact. Since there are no freely moving ions, electricity can't flow through this solution. Now let's see what happens when calcium chloride, or CaCl2, dissolves. Like sodium chloride, this is an ionic compound composed of a metal and a nonmetal. Like sodium chloride, the calcium chloride particles also dissociate in solution. But notice the concentrations of the two ions up in our concentration table. So pause the video again and answer some more questions on the study guide. Let's try one more dissolution experiment. I'm going to dissolve NaNO3, or sodium nitrate. Do you think this compound will break into ions? Notice that this compound contains the metal sodium and the nonmetals nitrogen and oxygen. Let's shake a little sodium nitrate into the solution. Look what happens here. The compound does dissociate, but not completely. It looks like there's still a little molecule floating around in this solution, a substance we call nitrate. Let's pause the video again and answer some more questions on the study guide. To summarize, some solids that dissolve in water create a solution that carries electricity, called an electrolyte while other solids that dissolve form non-electrolytes. And this all depends on the particles that form during the process. So let's write a summary of what was illustrated in this simulation. Now just for fun, we're going to mess with our electrolyte solution a bit. You probably observed that the conductivity, and thus the brightness of the light, increases as more salt is added. Watch what happens if we add more water to our solution. We can create the opposite effect if we allow water to evaporate. But watch closely. Something rather interesting happens when all the water evaporates. The light goes off and a white substance is left behind. And if I slowly add water, notice what happens then. Suddenly, the light goes back on, and brightly. This is quite interesting. Can you explain what was happening there? 